Hello and welcome to the stream. Um, back here with uh, Connor McKenna again, um, and in this uh, in this video, we're going to be discussing the hurling um, that's coming up this weekend. Um, plenty of matches um, across all the different levels. So, um, welcome, Connor, and uh, we'll start off. Let's have a look. We'll start off with the Leinster hurling championship where we have Dublin against Kilkenny on Saturday, um, 3.45. So how do you see that one going? Yeah, I'm looking forward to that game a lot. Um, Kilkenny are, are very, very strong, as, as would be expected. Um, Dublin are kind of a bit of an unknown quantity in some ways. They're kind of, they're very, very strong in a lot of ways. Like the players are there. There's raw materials there in Dublin to have a very, very good hurling team. Um, the question is whether they can build on the promise them. It's probably about time that they probably started delivering them and winning Leinster's again. The 2013 was the last time that they won the Leinster hurling title. So Kilkenny actually, you could nearly say the same for them. They haven't won the Leinster's in 2016. Now, there used to be a time where the Leinster hurling championship was actually more one-sided than the Leinster football championship and that Kilkenny used to absolutely walk it every year. Those days are well and truly gone now. Like Galway maybe going into the province obviously, obviously helped them helped improve the competitive competitiveness of it. And then Wexford as well in the last year since David Fitz took over have been have been, have been revived. And then Dublin as well are very strong. So there's four teams in Leinster who are genuine contenders to win it virtually every year. And it's really led to a very, very good championship. I think it's actually it's a brilliant championship the Leinster Hurling Championship. And like you saw last year Wexford win it. Like it means an awful lot to people to win it. And Kilkenny would love to get their hands in the Bob O'Keefe Cup again. Now, this weekend against Dublin is going to be an interesting one. Dublin have played against Leach. They've had their game. They scored 231. Like, having played the game in Crow Park, same as this weekend, it's going to be a huge benefit to Matty Kenny's side. It's allowed them to try a few things, see what's worked, see what's not worked out. I believe Kilkenny are going playing challenge matches at the moment. They've played a few. And that's not really in their DNA over the years has been to play challenge games. But they just want so desperate to get up to the speed of the hurling. Now, if you look at the hurling in Kilkenny, it's an absolutely ridiculously high standard. Like the club championship in Kilkenny is exceptional. You see Barry Hale Shamrocks there won two All-Irelands in a row and they won a Kilkenny championship again this year. And like, and it's like James Stevens nearly bet them this year. Like, so Kilkenny hurling is, is definitely, it's probably still the barometer for how other, for, for the standard of hurling in the country. Now, the, the county team hasn't been as strong in recent years. It's, it's very, very much a team in transition since they lost a lot of retired players a few years ago. But like last year, like the Kilkenny are a type of team, they'll always have a brilliant chance in a one-off game. They can beat anyone in a once-off game. And they proved that last year. Like Wexford took them out in the in the Leinster final, but they went down. They weren't given a huge chance against Cork. They absolutely steamrolled Cork in the second half, doing weight. And they came and played Limerick, steamrolled Limerick in the first half, eight or nine points up, and went out and knocked out Limerick. So Kilkenny have absolutely got bags of hands and huge potential and they'll, they'll, they'll never be be too far away and that's that's kind of the same this year so I think that they'll um, I think they'll just have too much for Dublin this week Okay um, I would certainly I would certainly have thought that um, Kilkenny would probably be the favourites for that one but I have to say um, probably even more so than that game I'm particularly looking forward to Galway and Wexford um, what do you make of that one? Yeah that'll be that'll be a classic game I'd say um, the Galway um, didn't beat Wexford last year. It was a draw in Pierce Stadium and saw it in. It was a poor enough game of hurling, really, but it was close throughout. And Wexford probably felt they should have won the game. And then 2018, um, then Galway bet Wexford in the Leicester Championship. And in 2017, Galway, bet, or Galway beat Wexford in the Leicester Final. And Wexford had a, brought a massive crowd to Crow Park that day. There was a great buzz around the place. It was Davies first year in charge. And Galway won the Leicester Championship in 2017, 2018. They were very, very unlucky last year. Like They finished with five points went out and scored in difference. Dublin bet them on the last day and then they needed Dublin to beat them and the other match to be a draw and the other match happened to be a draw. So Galway went out in absolutely miraculous circumstances really. There was three teams and five points and they were just eliminated. Like So I think that this year Galway are coming in as an unknown quantity. They've got Shane O'Neill and is a very, very good manager from Limerick there. He was over in a piercing there in Limerick City. He took the Galway job. They actually couldn't get a manager. It was just so such a mess after Michal who resigned, done it, who did a great job. He led them to the promised land for the first time since 1988 when they crossed the line and won the Lee McCarthy in 2017. They are up against Wexford now. Galway, I think, are unknown quant are definitely dark horses this year. They've won three all Ireland minors in a row. They have to maybe deliver it. They've always had full overage, but they were won the Ireland three years ago, lost by a point at Ireland final two years ago, and they'll be serious very, very much there thereabouts this year. Now Wexford on the other hand 
are a side which like they have so many hurlers in their prime and they have such a, a good core of a team Westford. they have a big depth of squad as well so they're probably not given as much credit as they maybe should get for how good a team they actually are like they've been consistent since David took over in 2017 in the league and the championship they've, been, they've, they've proven it has good enough to beat any of the big teams and even more so in the league but championship as well they've had a few very very good results as well so I think that Wexford like there's no reason to suggest that they won't be as strong this year as they were last year. Like, they've lost no players or anything like that. And like they probably were a score and forward short, but Rory O'Connor has really set up to the mark as well. And he's a very, very strong hurler. Like um if you look at Connor McDonald is very, very good inside. Like Lee Chin is a super hurler. Like so Wexford have Wexford have a great panel of players and like they have a very, very good coach in David Fitz. I don't think he gets as much credit. Like he's won absolutely everything. He's won a Fitzgibbon Cup at LIT. He's won a league title with Clare. Like he's won a Munster hurling championship with Waterford, he's won an All Ireland hurling championship with Clare, and he's won a Leinster hurling championship with, with Wexford, and he's won a Clare senior hurling championship with Six Mile Bridge. There, like so, he's won absolutely everything, and he doesn't really get as much credit as he deserves. I'd say the manager using the soccer analogy, the manager I probably compare him to would be Jose Mourinho in the sense that you know he goes into a team, builds the whole squad, gets that confidence going, and and wins, and he's he's adored by his own players. Like and he's just Dave Davy is such a good coach and a very genuine decent fan as well. Like so. I think Galway Wexford this week. It, it's hard to call. if I, if if I had to probably call it though, I'd probably edge towards Galway. Okay, and uh, we'll move we'll move on down um, into what's my favorite, my absolute favorite competition, um, the Monster Hurling Championship. I always feels like you could literally just get any of these teams and just throw them up against the wall, and, and whatever pairing you come up with is going to be a cracker, you know. So. Um, Saturday, three thirty. We've got um, an old, an old, old rivalry. You know, Cork and Waterford. It's always a, it's always a big game. So, how do you see that one? I'm actually looking forward to this game, Jerry. I think mostly out of any of the hurling games this weekend. I think this is going to be a brilliant game of hurling. I think that this is so hard to call as well. Like Waterford's record in Munster Championship hurling in recent years has been diabolical. Like they lost to Cork in 2017. They bounced back superbly to get to the Ireland final. We're within the puck of the ball to win and. They looked to be a county. They were playing for their manager then. They were so, so tactically um, shrewd. They had a serious pan of players across the pitch. Like, they were very, very unlucky in 2016 not to be in the other in the final. They haven't won a Munster Hurling Championship since 2010. So they're 10 years chasing glory in Munster. You know? And like if you look at them like from a practical perspective, like the, the 2018, they played four group games, got 1.1 draw. 2019, they played four group games in Munster, got zero points and got three very, very heavy defeats. So they haven't been in a good place in the Munster Championship in recent years, have Waterford. Now, the fact that there was no qualifiers did not suit them at all because, like, they just, I think they had slow starts both years and they just never really got going. Now, this year, last year, Paul Fanning went after one year. Fanning is a very, very good hurling man in Waterford. He's involved there in Mount Sinai and they very, very, family has been very good to Waterford hurling. So he was a bit unlucky not to be given more maybe than one year, but Liam Cattle is in there now and Cattle is a shoe operator. Like Cattle was Cattle was absolutely brilliant with um with um Tipperary under twenty one. So he they got they won two All Ireland in two years. He was there in, in eighteen and nineteen. The first one definitely as the head, second one probably expected to win it, but he doesn't take any 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 rubbish he doesn't then does Liam Cattle and like Court now, Kieran Kingston's back at the hand there. Kingston was there in in 16 and 17 and he was a coach with Jimmy Barry Murphy previously he has an absolute huge amount of respect within the county and nationally and it, it, it it's um it's not hard to see why he's a real a real gentleman and a genuine a genuine great man for Cork Hurling his son Shane is on the team as well he's a good player now if I was actually looking at the squads in Ireland Cork have an absolutely massive abundance of talent and they have an unbelievable tradition as well and tomorrow I think is Christy Ring's 100th birthday so They'd love to. They'd love to win the to win against Waterford to mark that. They'd push them, um, but like and again, also at the weekend they had Terence McSweeney, the hunger striker, was a hundred years um a hundred years dead as well. So there's a real ceremonial atmosphere to court this weekend, and like the only thing, they're missing three massive players. Owen Cadigan is injured, Dara Fitzgibbon is injured, and um and and Robbie O'Flynn is suspended from the league. He his red card carries over from March against Galway, so. Those three lads could be missing. Now, Waterford have a hidden gem in in um, Desi Hutchinson. He's a player who's come back this year. He was playing, I think, for Brighton and Hove Albion over in England. And he's only back this year from Batty Gunner. He was very, very good for them in the in the Waterford Club Hurling Championship. Now, 
Austin Gleason is a hurler who they probably haven't got as much out of Gleason as they should probably could have had the last year, but Gleason has the talent to match any hurler in Ireland. Now, if you look at the underage, Waterford, the Cork have been a lot better, more consistent than Waterford the underage level, but this is where it gets interesting. Waterford have won another Ireland minor under 21 in recent years. Cork haven't done that. So while Cork's record is more consistent, Waterford have produced more hurdles. And I always say there's two challenges for counties. The first one is to produce hurdles, good hurdles underage. The second one, which is every bit as difficult, is to bring them through. Now, Waterford have brought through an awful lot of good players. Well, Cork are starting to bring them through. But Cork's, the, 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 the hurling, they have great hurdles. Like the, if, if the game is going well, Cork will flow. If, if like, the, this the kind of the team is the sum of all its, its operators. Like, but Cork, if everything's going well, if the machine is going smooth, Cork are excellent. They, they won't be stopped. If things are going bad, Cork have a tendency maybe... I won't say throw in the towel, but they do drift out with games. They were absolutely flying in 2017. Then they were playing Waterford. Cahillan, I think, was the fullback got the red card. Waterford completely took over. Cork went out again. Then Waterford won by 11 points in 2017. In 2018, Cork played super hurling they had in the Munster Championship. Then they were playing super against Limerick in the All-Ireland semi-final. And then, again, it went to extra time. Things went wrong for them. Limerick just got a rally on. Cork folded next round. They just didn't have that bench. And Limerick pushed on. Limerick have really pushed on since. And then last year... But I saw them against Westmead in, in the Ireland Premier League quarterfinal. They absolutely destroyed Westmead in the day. It was again, it was a case of everything taken and everything was going right. I didn't think they'd be stopped at all in the quarterfinal. They played Kenny the first half. They were super against Kenny. They missed more goal chances. Second half, Kenny just used. They brought savage intensity. Then they won the match. They absolutely blew Cork off the park in the second half. Like so, that tends to happen. Now the way Liam Cattle works, they, they, they doesn't take any rubbish. Like so, Waterford are going to be so shrewd, so physical. They're going to really. He gets stuck in. They're going to bring a savage intensity, and they're going to really. Cal is definitely going to get the best out of Warford. Like so, I'm just so looking forward to it. I think that if, if Cork get ahead of the Mary, Patrick Horgan is just an absolute joy to watch. It. It's it's actually fitting on, on Christy Ring's um, 100 birthday. I think Horgan is probably the next the next best uh, player Cork probably ever produced. He's just an absolute star, and that is not said lightly because they have produced some absolute stars. But he's just a joy to, and he's actually from the Glen Rovers Rings um, Rings old club. So I just think that. Like Horgan, if 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 Cork can get a run on Waterford and go ten or 20, 12 points up, then early then they win the game. But if it goes into a dog fight, then you'd probably have to fancy Waterford. Like it's so hard to call. I just think that. Oh, I was going to say I want to call Cork to win narrowly, but if it ends up then probably being a bit hypocritical because I'm saying if it goes narrowly, probably Waterford are going to win. But I think Cork might just do enough to just get over the line to book yourself a place in the Munster final, which would also lead to a place in the All Ireland quarter final. On top of that. Okay, and. Um... Obviously, another game that doesn't um, that doesn't necessarily need the, need the, the, the big build up um, is a, another absolute cracker, Tipperary and Limerick, um, which obviously um, Limerick they were the team that pro- probably I I thought at the start um, heading into the, the series I thought they were probably the team that the, in my opinion would would win the would win the the McCarthy this year. Um, I didn't see anything last weekend that was going to change my mind. So how do you see it? Do you think Limerick will have too much for Tipperary or do you think Tipperary could, um, could beat Limerick? It's actually funny. I'm actually not looking forward as much to this game as I am to other games. And I'll tell you why. It's because Limerick and Tipper the last two All-Ireland champions. And both of those teams have set their sights much further than, than provincial glory. Like, like Limerick won the All-Ireland in 2018. They didn't win a Munster title. Tipperary won the All-Ireland last year. They didn't win a Munster title. So... The team who wins the Munster actually has a bad record in in, in the in all Ireland, in the All Ireland series semi finals particularly. So I actually don't look forward to this game as much as people think. I just think that the loser of this game will do very well in the qualifiers and they'll probably still get to an Ireland quarter final regardless in potential semi final. I just think that while the Cork Waterford game, like the loser of that game might find it harder to build themselves up. So I think that's been probably nearly a more important game. But having said that, Limerick and Tip always produce good games. But I just think like if this game was in an absolute Trobbed out, sold out, Gaelic grounds, Thurdis, or potentially Parky Cueve, it would just get the happy. There would be a great occasion, you know, that kind of way. But I, I don't know, is it going to be the same in an empty stadium? Like Limerick last week, they scored 36 points. They didn't do too much wrong, truth be told. Like Tip, it's just, it's just, there's absolutely no form guide for this game at all because Tip weren't fantastic in the league, but they didn't have to be fantastic in the league. Like, and then the league's been suspended and there's been no action since. Like, so. I just think this game, it's very hard to call. Having the game last weekend might just benefit Limerick. But like Tip, Tip have very, very good scoring power too. I think Tip, if this was an All Ireland semi final, I think it would be an absolute classic game. It would, and it could easily be an All Ireland final. But kind of, but 
I don't know, I think this weekend, Limerick's momentum, they might just have, they're probably a bit small, bit more consistent than over the last year. I might just go with Limerick just to edge it and get to a Munster final, but I think definitely this weekend, I won't say there'll be shadow boxing, but I think we could definitely see both teams meet later on in the championship in a couple of different games. Okay. Um, and uh, we'll move um, to the, the competition that probably is the most personal interest for us, um, the Joe McDonough Cup. So um, Westmeath obviously lost last weekend and Kerry won last weekend. Um, the two sides meet on Saturday afternoon. So do you think it's going to be a case of Westmeath getting their campaign back on track or do you think Kerry can take a step towards the, the final? Well, I'd love to say I think Westmeath are going to win the match, Jerry, but I don't know, would that be an honest answer? I, I just think that... I don't know how people have Westmeath as favourites for this game, to be honest with you, on the moment, because Westmeath are coming in off a very, very moral deflating defeat against Antrim. They've shipped an awful lot of criticism in the week. A lot of it on online message boards and um, completely unjustified. Westmead actually have very, very good herders within their squad and they're missing a few lads too. But I think that Kerry, they've played two matches now and there's nothing better than match time. Um, savage tends to get yourself ready for a game. They went to Tullamore in the league final they lost by three points to a very, very good Antrim team, as they proved last week. They went and played Mead last weekend. They gave Mead a bit of a trimming. That was a box signal that they had to do that. They won in Mullingar last year against Westmead. And it's actually funny. Kerry or Westmead are in a similar position this year to what Kerry were in last year. Kerry had lost to Antrim heavily in the first round last year up in, up in Dunloy. And they had to bounce back the next week or they were out. And they went to Westmead. Westmead had absolutely destroyed off the playing since late and hurdle the previous week. Westmead were 1 to 7 one day. They were unbackable favourites. Antrim went there. Or Kerry even went in. They tore their script up completely to beat Westmead. Westmead have to do something similar against, against Kerry this weekend. Now, last year, there's been nothing between Westmead and Kerry when they played. Westmead probably have a slightly better record. But then, having said that, Kerry probably have a slightly better record in the championship. So, Kerry bet them in 2017 in Mullingar. Bet them in 2019 in Mullingar and Westmead bet them in 2018 down in Kerry. So, and Westmead bet them in 2016 in Kerry. So, it's actually home advantage has meant nothing in this fixture. So, based on that, you'd probably, I'd love to say I think Westmead will win this weekend, but I think Kerry might just might just be a bit in a bit better position. But it's hard to know. It's, it's hard to know how it works. I'd say Kerry certainly should be favourites this weekend. I'd say Westmead might will have a big performance in them. They'll, they'll give a very, very good, good account. Said. There's not a more honest bunch of players in Ireland than those Westmead lads so that they've really in the last five six years they've really delivered and they've they've never they've never um let them they've never really they've always gone out with a fight put it that way and they, I put it this way they'd certainly have a big a big say after that again but I think Kerry it might just be they might just be a small bit too strong for them but hopefully hopefully I'm wrong okay and um in the other uh, Joe McDonough Cup game this week um, obviously, Meath are the team on a on a bye this week. They they're not playing with the competition having five five teams. So the other game is Carlo and Antrim. Um, up here in Antrim, we've sort of been been walking the clouds for the last fortnight, where we've we've had the the Division One status secured and uh, a big a big win against a good West Meath side. So are we gonna are we gonna soar higher? Or are we are we coming back down to earth? It's hard to know, Jerry. I think the first thing I want to say, this game is much, much more important from a Carlo perspective than an Antrim perspective. And I'll explain that now because Carlo have had an absolutely rotten run in recent times. I was actually down in Dr. Cullen Park, I think it was last February in 2019, and they played Galway and they got a draw and they were full value for the draw. And Carlo Hurland had won a Joe McDonough and a Division Two title the year before. And they just looked to be in a, in a brilliant place. And in the next match, they played Leash. And it was a draw. And that wasn't a result to be sneezed at. That was still a good result really for Carlo, you know. Then they played, or maybe they played Waterford. Well, they, they got, they got Waterford gave a bit of beating, but they played Offaly in the last round and they lost that game. And that was a bad result because it put them into a relegation playoff. In the relegation playoff, they were 10 or 11 points down against Offaly at half time and were a man down. And somehow they produced the Royal the Rovers performance to win that match and stay up in Division 1. Then they went into the Leinster Championship Played four games, it took four. When they played Galway away in the first round, competed well, and they lost in three games, which was it was nothing to be ashamed of, right? Like you know that kind of it was nothing to be to be too um this downbeat about. But they got relegated, John McDonough. But then they went into the Walsh Cup, lost three games, and that then in Division One of the league this year they lost all six games. So they're after losing, I think about maybe twelve. Uh, they have lost a savage amount of games. They lost four Leinster games, two two or three in the league last year, four in a three in the Walsh Cup, and then. 
maybe six in the league series. They've lost a huge, huge amount of games in succession, and they just need a win. They went out with a whimper against Westmead in the relegation playoff in the league, and they, while it was the week before all the action was was um, was suspended, like so. While this, it's not do 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 or die for Carroll this weekend. If they could get a result this weekend, it would do two things. It would curb an awful losing streak, and also it would set them up very, very nicely for a place in the Joe McDonough final. Now, they're the team that went down last year, so they have to be seen as contenders for the competition. While Now, why I said it's not an absolutely do-or-die game for Antrim is they've, Antrim have had a flawless year so far. Like They've done nothing wrong, really, like so far in the league or championship. Now, while... If they win, what, what I meant by that was there's no point Antrim winning their four games and then going into a final and losing a final. Well, if they're going to get caught, it's far, far better to be caught in a game like this because they have two more games to bounce back and recover and pick up momentum. But having said that, if Antrim were to win that game this weekend, they'd be more or less, they'd, well, I put it this way, they'd have won foot and four toes in Joe McDonough final. They'd be very, very, it would take a, a very surprise series of results to see them not in the final. So Antrim can win this keep going it, 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 it's nearly if Antrim win this game it'll be huge they'll be seen as an absolutely brilliant team they'll be seen as going fierce by which they will be and they can almost prepare for a final like and they can be they can it'll be flying it but if they lose this game it'll be nearly a blessing in disguise maybe or even a draw in this game because it might bring them back down I won't say bring them back down to earth small because I'm not saying the Antrim lads are getting complacent or like that but it might maybe give them it might give them maybe a, a bit more of a desire to bounce back and then they could, I put it if they had a choice of beating Carlo now or beating the team in a Joe McDonough final, it's far, far more important to beat them in a Joe McDonough final. I think in 2018, Carlo went to Antrim, lost that game, won all the other games and won the competition. Like So I think that often it's no harm maybe to lose a game halfway through a competition. I, I put it this way, if there is a time to lose a game, it's now, or maybe as Westmead saw, like, I put, if Westmead win their next three games and get to a Joe McDonough final, Nobody will remember that they got a hiding against Antrim in the first round. You know that kind of way. Like so, if there's a time to lose, it's in the early stages of the competition. But I think Antrim carried this weekend. Antrim might just have a crest of momentum. I think Antrim might just get over the line. Okay. Um, obviously, there's another couple of competitions, but um, some one of the one of the people on the on the stream here didn't charge their phone enough, and then Connor would be too professional for that kind of thing. So um, obviously, obviously, it's me. So. Uh, what I'll do with these um, with these Chris Dairy Chris Cops uh, games is I'll just get um, Connor. I'll, I'll call out the game and I'll get Connor just to make a prediction on who he thinks might win the game. Just because, as I say, my battery's about to die. And uh, apologies to the teams in the in the in these competitions, but that's hundred percent my fault. Um, so Chris Dairy Cop down versus Derry. Um, it's a hard one to call. Down had momentum in the. In the when they won in the Division Two B final, they might just have enough for this weekend. I might just say down slightly, although Derry will get them again. Okay. And the other Chris Deering game, Caldera versus Wicklow. Um, again, it's a tricky one. Wicklow had momentum from last week. Caldera are there because they got a walk over off. He probably would have beaten them, but Caldera probably been slightly ahead of Wicklow, although Wicklow were a division ahead of them. But it's, it's hard. I, I'm going to say Caldera. Caldera. Okay, and moving on to the Nicky Record Cup. Um, Donegal versus Armagh. Um, it's a tough one to call that game. Um, it, it, the both sides will like Armagh had a good win last week, Donegal had a good win last week, so they're coming off the game as winners. I'm gonna go with Armagh, okay. And Tyrone versus Mayo, yeah. Well, this is an interesting one. I might just be more like Tyrone have put in great effort in hurling underage, and it hasn't really maybe shown as much as it should have done. Now, Mayo have been a good, good bit ahead of them in recent years. Now, You'd expect Mayo might just have enough, but Tyrone are an interesting county in Hurling, and they're definitely one to watch in the next five, ten years. But I'd say Mayo on this occasion, maybe just. Okay. And we'll finish up then with uh, a prediction for the Lurie Mayor Cup game between Fermanagh and Cavan. Oh, that, that, that's um, it's a tricky one. I wouldn't have seen too many of the teams much, um, to be honest with you, Jerry. so I wouldn't like to make a celebration, but I suppose... Fermanagh have probably been a small bit more consistent in recent years and getting top there. I think Fermanagh, if I had to go, I might just go edge towards Fermanagh. Yeah, I think um, they had a good win last week against Louth in the in the competition, so we're pro- probably um, coming in as favourites. But again, um, I apologise to the the fans from the, the Chris Deering, Nicky Rackard and Laurie Muir Cups. Um, as I say, some unprofessional idiot didn't charge his phone before, so we'll... Uh, 
we'll certainly um, get a bit of talk about them before the um, the competitions are over. Yeah. But um, for now, uh, sure. sorry. It's, it's just as well like that we, we actually have a valid reason not to cover those competitions today because of that, but often they're kind of ignored for no reason. Like So it is a shame. And, and the players in those counties, they, they do sometimes they do get criticised when the county performances go bad, but they don't really get the glamour that the top counties get. So it's a hard job as a herder. So, yeah, definitely we will be touching them a bit more. And it's a pity there's not more coverage, even information published on the website. But it's even hard to find out formats of competition. Like something like that should be, should be freely available. And I think that, we're doing them a disservice, probably, but there is a genuine excuse to say, but as a rule, those countries don't get anywhere near as much coverage as they deserve. Certainly, certainly agree. Um, so, as I say before, my battery cuts off. Thanks very much for watching. My thanks to Connor. Um, we'll be back um, with uh, more GA coverage after the games. Hopefully, next week we'll we'll figure out what uh, sort of time and and I'll um, I'll put it on uh, the internet on the different pages and stuff so that people know um, when we'll be when we'll be going live. But um, for now, anyway, um, thanks for Connor and hopefully you've enjoyed this. Whether you're watching live now or um, you're watching it later, thanks for watching and hopefully we'll be in contact again soon. Thank you. Thanks.